Welcome GDLers to another edition of Scripting Adventure and today we are going to talk about the hide parameter statement. Now there are times when you want to hide or show certain parameters in your object based on various options that the user has selected to make it easier to understand how to use that object. This is where the hide parameter statement is used. Now the hide parameter statement is found under non-geometric scripts, the parameter script, and it's right down the bottom. And we see that we've got two options with the syntax hide parameter with a name. Notice that the name is in inverted commas or any number of optional names after that separated with a comma. We can use the hide parameter all. It hides all the parameters except those listed after the all keyword. So we'll just talk about the hide parameter statement in this video. So let's have a look at our desktops and under our desktops we can see that with our options of square, rounded and chamfered we only want this corner radius to show with the rounded option. We don't want any corner radius to show with the square option and we would prefer a different description if we have the chamfered option selected. So that's one parameter we need to look at. And then under 3D representation, we've got a couple more here that we've got building materials associated with the desktop and the legs. And then we have an override surface option here with an associated surface. So with that override unchecked, we would like to be able to hide the leg surface and the desktop surface because they're not relevant if they're not being overridden. So let's have a look at that. We'll open our object, drag the tab to the end, just so that it's easier to organize, restore down, open my parameter script. Now you can use parameter script commands or statements in the master script, but for the sake of legibility and understanding, the script and keeping it organized, you do as much of the parameter script as you can in the actual parameter script. And the way I organize my scripts is I've got these headings in my parameter script and one of them is hide because hiding parameters is something you do in nearly every object you write. So we'll open up the parameters next door so that we can refer to the proper names. So we'll start with an easy one first. We'll say desktop surface. And what is the logic of that? If the desktop surface override is on, then we want to show this desktop surface. Otherwise, we want to hide it. Now, here's the sort of reverse logic thing. It's a hide parameter statement, not a show parameter statement. There's no show parameter statement. There's only a hide parameter statement. So if any of the parameters have an X beside them here, meaning that they are hidden in the definition, you can't show them. You can only hide them. So it's a bit of a turned around logic that sometimes takes a little bit to sort out in your head. But here we go. We'll say if the override is true. Now with logic statements, zero is false. One or more is true. If this parameter is checked, it's a one. If it's unchecked, it's a zero. So I don't actually have to say equals one. I don't have to say that. I can just say if desktop BMAT override, and if it's a one, that's a true test. Then end if. We'll close our if statement first, and we want to hide our parameter. The statement is hide parameter, and then it's in inverted commas. Hide parameter, oops, wrong one. Hide parameter desktop surface. So if the desktop BMAT override is true, we don't want to hide, we want to show. So therefore, it's the opposite of this. Now I could say equals zero, and it's hide parameter, 
Another logical way of saying this is to go not. That's a statement within GDL is not, which is testing the opposite of the state. So if the desktop bmat override is not true, then we will hide the desktop surface. Let's check that condition, check that script, save it, and have a look. Under 3D representation, if override desktop surface is turned off, it's hiding the surface. Turn it on, it shows the surface. Easy. Let's have a look at the next one. We'll just copy this entire statement and we'll say if the leg BMAT override is turned off. So leg BMAT override, we want to hide the parameter of leg surface. Let's save it. Check it. Turn that off. Turn that off. There we go. That tidies up our parameters, makes it easier for the user to understand what's going on. Declutter the experience. Done. Let's now have a look at this one up here. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So we'll put these statements in the order that our parameters are declared. Once again, to make the script easier to understand. And we'll say if, now what is the conditional statement? We'll open our 2D script. Let's have a look. It will be one of these conditional statements. So if the desktop is a square desktop, we don't want any parameter showing. So we'll go if D type equals square, copy this across, and we want to hide this corner radius. Hide parameter, corner R, let's check out logic. So it's square, rounded it shows, chamfered it shows. Okay, well that's good, right? That's what we want. Square, it's hidden. Rounded, it's there. Chamfered, it's there. So here's the other thing we want to do. If this is chamfered, we don't want this to read corner radius. We fix this in our dynamic hotspots. We've got chamfer size there. So when the user edits it by the dynamic hotspot, they get the correct feedback. But when they open the interface here, they don't get the correct feedback. Now it's a small thing. The user might be able to work it out, but it could also cause confusion. And for the sake of neatness, we'll tidy this up. So what we'll do is we'll create a new parameter and we'll call it chamfer size. It's a length parameter and we'll call it chamfer size in the description. Now, somehow we need to swap these parameters depending on what's going on. First of all, I'll do the hide parameter logic. So if the desktop type, what's it going to be? So if it's anything but chamfered, so the way we'll, I work out that is we'll go D type chamfered. If it's anything but chamfered, not chamfered. So hopefully that makes sense. The logical condition is if the desktop type is not desktop chamfered, then we want to hide the chamfer size. Hide parameter chamfer size and above it here we'll do the same but for our rounded option and we want to hide the corner radius like so check our script it's okay now let's see if I got my logic right so under the square desk, I don't want anything showing under here. Good, it isn't. Let's just test it in here. Rounded, corner radius is showing. Chamfered, chamfer size is showing. So I've got my display working correctly, my hide parameter logic working correctly. 
Now let's work out a way to swap the values depending on what's showing. So what we want is a way to test if a value has been changed and then execute certain statements based on whether a parameter value has changed. Now fortunately, there is a way to do that. Under the help, under miscellaneous, global variables and general library part parameters, you get a whole bunch of different things that you can test that will give you feedback on the object and its environment. So for example here, glob, standing for global, layer will tell you the layer that that element is placed on. Glob elevation will give you the base elevation of that element and so on. And you can see there's a whole swag of them. But in this particular instance, we are after global mod par name, global modified parameter name. It's the name of the last modified parameter. So that's what we'll use. We'll come back here and I have it under my heading parameter exchange. So we'll say if glob mod par name equals, so let's see, if it equals corner R, then we want chamfer size equals corner R, All right? So if the corner R gets changed, then we want the chamfer size to be updated to equal the same. Good. That's one. We'll just check our script. Incompatible types and expressions. So what's not clear in the help is that this needs to be in inverted commas like that. There we go. So we've done that one. Let's do the same for our chamfer size. Check our script. Good. So that's working. And you remember from a previous video that once I click back into here, that parameter script compiles and runs. So if I change this, I want that to update, but it's not updating. Why is that? The reason is that although I've changed the values in the parameter script, I haven't actually changed the parameter. And you'll recall that from a previous video I've shown that you actually need to use the parameter statement. So we'll go down here and we'll say parameters. Now, a quick refresher under non-geometric script, parameter script, parameters. The parameter value of a library part can be modified. So this is the statement you use to actually change the parameter and not just the value that's running inside the script itself. So we'll say parameters corner R equals corner R. So I've changed the value of corner R earlier in the parameter script just up here. Now it's time to set the parameter and we'll just use a comma to separate it and we'll say chamfer size equals chamfer size. We'll check that script. Script is okay. We'll come up here, we'll change this to 80, 80, and that has updated the chamfer size. So if I change the chamfer size to 60, that has updated the corner R. So that's working the way I want it. So I'll save this. Now keep in mind, this is now the default values set for new placed objects. Existing placed objects will not have this working yet. So if I change this to chamfered, it's zero, which is not what I want. So I'll just do a reset to default. Corner radius is 80. If I change this and go 60 and then change my option to chamfered, it's all working as I expect. Change this to 65, rounded. Excellent. Now there's just one more thing I'd like to point out about the hide parameter statement in that you can put in multiple parameters using the comma separator. 
Now we don't have multiple parameters that we want to hide at the same time within this object. So I'll just create a few just so that you can see what I mean. So under this desktop surface, we'll just create a few here. Okay. Now we want to hide them all when this is unchecked. So that is desktop BMAT override, which is down here, desktop BMAT override. So I will just And no comma at the end, indent them so that I know which statement they belong to. Let's put in another white space between these if statements, make them easier to read. And let's have a look here. Script is OK. We'll save it. Check out my object. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you see that? So something I didn't think of here is that I didn't indent them. It's because I'm rushing. Now that they're indented, they belong under this menu here. There we go. Under 3D representation, there's all my tests. So if I uncheck this, all of these should hide. There we go. They're all hidden. So they all belong to that hide parameter statement. And there they're back again. Just get rid of these. Don't need them. One thing I forgot to do is that because we have added a new parameter here that the user has direct input into, we need to limit that input. So what we will do is just copy this value statement down because it will be the same limitation for corner R versus chamfer size. And we just copy this parameter name into this values statement. And now that will have the same limitations one to the other so if we have a look at our object we can see that with the rounded type we've got our parameter limitations there and chamfered type we still have our parameter limitations which are the same so there you go the high parameter statement a way to keep your object nice and tidy for the end user now in the next video we're going to start looking at the user interface so the high parameter is one way of keeping the object tidy and presentable. The user interface is next level. So I'll see you then.